Hey guys, it's Dragon Ball for Life here today and I'm back with another video. Today's video I'm going to be reviewing the first arc of Dragon Ball GT. Now personally, I was planning on actually watching Dragon Ball Super from beginning to the end and then, you know, making a review on each arc. But when I made my uh, GT vs Super video and I was talking about why Dragon Ball Super characters are stronger than their, you know, GT kind of parts, there was somebody called Terrell Williams who was constantly commenting on the video saying, no, I'm wrong, this and that, saying GT Goku and the GT characters are way more powerful, they can do this and that. And I was, you know, going back and forth with him, but I did realize that I haven't seen GT since when I first watched it, which was literally right after I finished watching, you know, uh, Dragon Ball Super. So I was like, you know what? It isn't exactly fair for me to be saying this stuff, though I do remember quite a bit, especially the feats uh, aspect. I will say that I didn't know enough to just 100% say uh, definitively. And, you know, I was already planning on watching GT from the jump and going through each arc and reviewing it. I just wanted to do Super first, but after seeing that, I was like, you know what? Screw it. GT is shorter. Uh, this guy's been being a little bit annoying and I'm not going to comment on everything. So I might as well make a video. So I'm going to, I decided to rewatch GT, review each arc as it goes and talk about what I felt about it and then make a video separate after that about the power scaling of GT and, and you know, where they lie in the, you know, the power levels, especially compared to the super characters. And if I was right or wrong, and I'll be having a lot of evidence that I'll be taking up while, uh, you know, watching the episodes, but I also just want to review it as a whole and just talk about it. And in these reviews, I'll talk a little bit about power scaling, you know, for writing's sake. But for the most part, I'm just just going to focus on the writing direction they went with and the, uh, you know, character development and characterization in the, you know, the, this show. So the first arc, I'll admit, when I first watched it, I absolutely hated it. And ever since then, I was like, I'm never, ever going to watch this again. I hate this. This is, you know, annoying and stuff. But after rewatching it, I realized it wasn't as bad, but it was still bad. If I'm being honest, it's still I still consider it trash, and I still consider it the worst arc of all of Dragon Ball. It's it's worse than anything we saw in Dragon Ball. It's worse than anything we saw in Dragon Ball Z or Super. This is the most the worst arc for me, simply for a couple of reasons. One, it's boring as hell. Two, it kind of rehashes the same old stuff in Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. And three, the direction I could care less for. Uh, also, I want to state that this arc and the next arc are kind of confusing because they kind of blend in together. This arc doesn't officially end, uh, and it, it's weird because it goes through and obviously the baby arc is next, but they introduce baby while this arc is happening, you know, gathering the Black Star Dragon Balls, and basically it's like, the Black Star Dragon Balls, they do get them and they come to Earth and stuff, but but that is still correlating with uh you know the baby arc it kind of is like like this is blended in with it so it's like it's kind of hard to say that i'm specifically talking about the arc itself because you have the baby arc with it so that gets a little confusing but i'll try my best i'll try to stop at the part where you know before baby got introduced and you know became a big thing i think it was like around episode 23 or 24 is where the black star dragon ball somewhat uh you know ended and if I'm being honest, that's too many episodes. You, it took 23 to 24 episodes for them to finish this first arc, which was easily the worst arc. And the show is only 64 episodes, so that means majority of the show is going to be the Black Star Dragon Ball arc. So if you hate this arc, just know that like around one third or a little more than one third of the show is going to definitely be on that. So you're going to be uh, you know annoyed by it now. What did I like more about this? I thought that when I originally watched it, that everything about this arc I hated. Though I did, but then when I rewatched it, I did realize that, no, I don't hate anything about it. It's just the majority of it. I will be honest, I think the first half of the, or the beginning of this arc was actually very decently well. Uh, first of all, the problem of the Black Star Dragon Balls being a thing and them having to fly out and, you know, create the, start this adventure. It made sense why they had to do it. Uh, I felt like sometimes in Dragon Ball Z, stuff just happened just for the sake of happening. Whereas this one, at least it led up for and had a reasoning for why stuff happened. So I thought that was cool. Uh, I also liked the beginning where they landed on the first planet where they fought, you know, Don Ki and his guys and that, uh, I, I think it was an assassin guy that he had on his team. Uh, for, if I'm being honest, I did enjoy this one. I was like, okay, this is giving me good uh, Dragon Ball feels, but it felt also like we're past, you know, Dragon Ball. I also liked uh, Don Ki's... Uh, you know, a guy that was uh, supposed to be fighting Goku. I thought that was pretty cool. But I think outside of that, after that, I didn't really care about this arc at all. And even in that arc, there were some problems 
and I'll get to that. But I think as a whole, this arc is very, very boring. It is is boring, and I don't like the direction they went. So that part I did like, but then after that, they kind of go into directions that I didn't really like, and I'll explain what I mean. Now, after this, we get to this planet where there's this giant catfish monster who is stated to create earthquakes and wants the girls in the village, which is basically just a rip off of, uh, you know, Dragon Ball with Oolong, except this time they're having Trunks dress up as a girl instead of Goku, which I did not, like, like, like I said, the one big problem for me personally with the show is the fact that they're just redoing Dragon Ball and they're ripping off, you know, their own work. They're ripping off Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, and I don't like that. You've guys seen how I felt about it when, uh, you know, Dragon Ball Super rips off their own shit or, you know, doesn't create anything new. I hate that type of writing. I think it's lazy. It's, it's a cop-out. Instead of, you know, writing something unique and different, you're just taking something of your old stuff and then taking it back in. And I feel like if you're going to do that, you might as well just not create it, you know, if you're not going to really do something new with it. But yeah, I did not like that. Also, I didn't like it in the original either. I thought that whole Oolong thing was kind of lame, but at least I could give it a pass since the characters at that time were weaker. But now, these characters are far stronger. They don't need to do something like that. Like, I just felt like, I don't know. I just, I didn't like it. It was corny. The giant planet wasn't too bad, but it wasn't really that entertaining. And then the rest of the arc was pretty boring. And then we get to the Par Par Brothers and the whole transition to the actual baby, uh, you know, saga or arc. Uh, where we get introduced to Mew, Dr. Mew, who's basically just a Dr. Jiro ripoff and his robotic creations. We get to meet the Par Par Brothers, which I absolutely hate them. They're cringy as hell, let's be honest. Their whole dance, their style, their design, everything about them is cringy. I absolutely hate everything about them. I think they're just lame ass characters. Then we get to the, you know, the people that are worshipping the, uh, you know, giant robot that's called Lude, which is considered to be a god or whatever but he was just a trick. I did not like that either. I felt that that was lame. The enemies that they had was lame. The guy that uh, used the whip and then the whip becoming the, you know, the whippy te uh, monster thing. I thought that was a lame fight between him and Goku. I didn't care for that. Uh, that one monkey guy, I think he was really weird. The fact that he was being really creepy with uh, Pan's doll and trying to look up her shirt. And it was just, I was like, okay, that's gross. Uh, I did not like this. I thought it was very lame. Dr. Mew, uh, you know, showing in himself. I'll talk about what I feel about him. Then the resurrection of Lude, I was like, really? The big thing is a giant ass robot that looks like a, an alien baby? It, it was just a stupid thing. Also, the fact that Goku uh, struggled to defeat this guy, Goku and uh, Trunks, and they had to work with Pan to destroy him from the outside and the inside. I did think that was a creative way to, you know, take down an enemy, but I also think it doesn't make sense that as powerful as Goku is right now, he should not be struggling against a giant robot. Even if it has the energy of other people, it should not be, you know, that big of a threat. Uh, but yeah, I thought that that enemy was pretty lame. Um, then we transition after that, we go to uh, uh, Giru, which is a new character that they added. Uh, we go to his planet, which is, you know, Dr. Mew took over this planet and had these robots taking over and stuff. And then also had, uh, what's the thing called? Uh, he was trying to build a robotic, uh, I guess a robotic mutant uh, hybrid army of humans and stuff, whatever. And he tried to have that. And personally, I did not like this either. I think the plan of uh, a cyborg uh, scientist creating robots to fight them doesn't really make much sense seeing as how powerful they should be. I mean, we just got past the Boo Saga. Why the hell are these guys considered a threat? And then they had an introduction of General uh, Rildo. I could care less about him. He seemed like a lame villain. Uh, Mew's plan seemed pretty stupid to me, if I'm being honest. Though later on, we find out the more revelation of his plan and the, you know, what's going to be transitioning into the second arc, which I like that plan a lot more. But the original plan was basically he wanted to spread out, um, what we were told was he wanted to uh, get uh, every uh, uh, organic organism and then transmute, transmute them into robotic uh, life forms, which I thought that was kind of lame. I also thought it was lame that these guys were fighting robots. Like, we saw Goku fight against, you know, Kid Buu and Majin Buu and all these forms of them. That should be way beyond anything a robot could do. So I thought that was lame. Also, the Alpha, whatever they were called, Mega Cannon, some shit. Those guys were also pretty lame villains. Like, he had to fight. General Rildo, I guess, was a little bit cooler, I, w I guess you could say. But his design is still pretty lame. He has really no personality. And his abilities weren't really anything that I would consider cool it seemed more like a cartoon uh he seemed more like a cartoon character you know the characters that are fighting this they seem more like cartoon villains and 
I don't know. They just didn't seem like there would be a threat. And it's even more ridiculous that he was stated to be stronger than Majin Buu, which I'm guessing Goku is comparing to Kid Buu at least. Uh, but still, I cannot imagine this guy being stronger than Majin Buu. Uh, being that's made out of metal and is a robotic being stronger than somebody like Majin Buu, just, it just never is really believable to, believable to me that somebody that, you know, is made out of metal, which these guys can destroy planets. I don't think metal, any strong form of metal could withstand a planet destroying attack. So I just thought that was lame. Dr. Mew, I think his, his, his everything about him he screams unoriginal. His design is just a ripoff of Dr. Zhou with just color changes uh, and uh, looking more robotic. And then his plan was basically what he had with the androids and stuff. And even the baby stuff is basically just cell. It's just the organ. It's just the cells of the sufurigens or the tuffles. Whereas uh, you know his one was just the cells of every uh, powerful being on Earth and stuff. And even outside of Earth with you know Frieza and his dad. But yeah, I just felt like it was a rip off of that. And baby is just a rip off of cell. And I didn't feel like it was original. I didn't feel like he was a cre it was creative. So I did not. I don't care for Doctor Mew. And when you think about it, technically Doctor Mew pushes the plot for the show for majority of it. The only time he doesn't push the plot for the show is in the last arc. The first arc he pushes it because you know he has these robots and he's doing all this stuff. The second arc is because he created Baby, or from what they explained, was Baby was the one who created him and was inside him or whatever. Um, then we have the third arc, which is you know the. Uh, Super 17 arc, which he was also a big part of that. The only part of the arc show that he didn't have any part in was the, you know, the Black Dragons arc, which, uh, if I'm being honest, that arc was, I mean, over being honest, he was basically the majority of it. Three out of four of the arcs, that's the majority of it, and he was just a lame character. Like I said, he was a ripoff of Dr. Jero. They even have him and Dr. Jero in hell, uh, you know, working together, and then Dr. Jero betraying him, or, uh, no, him getting, Dr. Joe getting betrayed by him, I think. I forgot who betrayed who. But it's just like, you know, it's just the same thing. And you can tell that Toei wasn't even trying to hide the fact that they were just ripping off of Toriyama's old work by, you know, doing that. I just felt like it was lazy to me, personally. Um, yeah, I didn't really care for this uh, little stuff. Um, Baby getting introduced, like I said, it kind of blends in with that, so it gets a little confusing. But I think Baby, once when he gets introduced, then that's when the Baby arc comes in and it's separate. And I would say the Baby arc is starting off a little bit uh, creative and stuff and has some creativity to it. But I still need to see it as a whole. But yeah, this uh, story as a whole was pretty lame. The first, uh, the beginning of it wasn't too bad. I like the whole donkey stuff in that planet. But then we got to the whole catfish thing, pretty lame. The um, giant... That was pretty, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't anything. Then we got the whole, uh, which was majority of it, was meeting, uh, you know, Dr. Mew and his plan, fighting against the Par Par brothers, which I absolutely hate them, fighting against uh, the cult leader dude, who's a whip dude, which was a whip. Then, uh, you know, fighting Lude, who was just a giant robot baby, which is a lame villain to fight. I mean, look at the villains that you have in Dragon Ball Super. You have Beerus, a god of destruction. You have, uh, you know, another, another universe where you have other Saiyans and you have a, an assassin who can stop time. Then you have, uh, you know, Goku Black, who is a uh, Supreme Kai who took over the body of a Goku and he gets strong and stronger and has his strength and has got divine energy in it and have a being who's immortal. Then you get to the Tournament of Power where you get to characters like Jiren who is considered to be uh, you know, a being above God of Destructions and, you know, was going to be a God of Destruction, all this stuff. You see the level of power and you see where they go to. And then you see GT and we're introduced with robotic creatures and that's supposed to be considered impressive or whatever. So I didn't like that. Um, uh, and then we get into the planet stuff. Most of the fights in the planet were pretty lame. The only one that was kind of interesting was the General Rildo fight against Goku, but that was also nothing really uh, special. And then when they had the whole reveal of Baby, I think that's when they got interesting. They do have a little bit further where, you know, Baby inhabits the body of this kid that he rep, uh, wrecks the ship, puts a Dragon Ball so they can come pick him up. Uh, so they have that. Uh, that part wasn't too bad, it was creative, but I wouldn't consider part of the Black Star Dragon Ball arc too much. And then they get the rest of the Dragon Balls and I think at that point they just want to wrap it up. But like I said, they took too many episodes. They took over 20 episodes for this Black Star Dragon arc, which is over like, you know, like, I wouldn't say one third, it's because that's not mathematically, you know, actually that is mathematically correct. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, it's basically like over one third the, uh, of the show. If you're telling me that this is one third of the show, that is bad. People saying that GT isn't bad, it's like, well, 
even if the rest of the arcs are good, which I wouldn't say all of them are really that good, but even if the rest of the arcs are good, one third of the show was very trash, so you don't really have that much of an argument there. But yeah, a lot of stuff also doesn't make sense. There's a lot of times in the show where they can just, you know, fly, but the characters don't fly for whatever reason. They're on a desert planet, Pan is walking, and she's dying of dehydration. I'm like, why the fuck are you walking? You could fly. And these characters have super speed. They should be, you know, they should be able to fly around this planet in, like, the entire planet in, like, a couple of seconds. And the fact that these guys are walking and struggling, I'm like, what the fuck are you guys walking for? Why are you so slow? It's like they forget that they have the ability to walk. They forget they have super speed. Sometimes they forget they have super strength. And it's like, once in a while, they showcase their powers. And it's just weird. It, it just, it just uh, doesn't fit for me. It's just off-putting. Like, super, obviously, a lot of times they had times where they didn't look powerful. But at least you could tell they still had their powers. And I'm not talking about power scale in general. I'm talking about the fact that they just don't use their powers. Like, a lot of these problems shouldn't be a problem. They're saying, oh, well, you know, the reason that uh, they're hiding and going in this uh, hiding mode to break the base of Donkey was because they didn't want the town's village people to be, you know, getting hurt or whatever, because they said that we might get hurt. But here's the thing. With their strength and their speed and their power, they should be able to take them out easily. I mean, Goku took out the Red Ribbon Army by himself as a kid, uh, and it took, like, less than a day to take them out. And he didn't, you know, wasn't hiding. He just ran into that uh, building and took them out. And now they're stronger and he has two other people with him. They could have bum-rushed this place and took them all out. There's no need for them to hide. Yes, they gave their concern for the citizens, but with their power, they could have been able to destroy them without them, you know, being able to do anything. I just felt like it was pointless. And they make stuff more of a danger when, or a threat when it doesn't need to be. And they add some stuff that they don't need. Like, first of all, Yuru... We do not need Guru. We do not need him to take over the dra uh, Dragon Radar. We could have just had a regular Dragon Radar. Uh, also, the whole thing with, uh, you know, I would say with, uh, you know, Guru. What, what was that thing called? Um, he did set up the plan where he was tricking them to come to, you know, uh, his planet so Dr. Mew can get his yeah, planet in, uh, in shape and stuff. But he was also double crossing with Trunks, which I thought was cool and creative. But one thing I didn't like was it didn't make sense that Dr. Muri knew about these guys because he said he set up uh, Guru, Guru there so they can intercept him. One, how did he know that they were crash land on that planet? Two, how the fuck did he even know about these guys? This was even before they were catching the Dragon, uh, Black Star Dragon Balls and before they were even messing with his plans. He was surprised to see them and now he's like, yep, I planned this ahead. I had Guru there. It made no sense. I think the writing was inconsistent in that point. It didn't really make any sense. Uh, that he knew the stuff and then he was tracking them, but then he was also surprised who they were and stuff. It just, it's just dumb to me. I felt like the writers were trying to be like, oh yeah, this was all part of the plan. When in reality, it doesn't make sense that he, he would set up a plan in motion when there was nothing to set up for. Like, what? So I felt like that was dumb. Besides that, I would say uh, a couple of other things I didn't like. I do not like Vegeta's design. I don't like the fact they gave him a stupid ass mustache. They cut his hair and it looks shitty and the clothes he's wearing. He does shave the mustache, which I thought was a great choice, but his hair still looks dumb as hell. Why didn't they keep the original hair? Like that was an iconic hairdo. I don't know why they changed it. Also his clothing, it's ass. Let's be honest. To our Dragon Ball Z, Vegeta changes his outfit, uh, you know, and how he transitions. He goes from, you know, having the shoulder pads to the regular Saiyan armor to having it without it. But having like a white collar, then having in, you know, uh, the, I would say, uh, you know, the Cell Saga and the Android Saga, having the red stripe, which was one of his coolest one, uh, the like bulletproof vest looking thing. And then in Boo's, uh, the Boo Saga, he had that like blue leotard thing with his arm sleeves out and the gloves. All those designs of his different, you know, ways he dressed was cool. But then this one was a complete departure. He's wearing leather pants, uh, a belt buckle, a red t uh, uh, maroon tank top, and black or gray gloves uh, le leather gloves it was the lamest design i'm like what the fuck are they doing with him they ruined his design they also made him lame the fact that he you know grew out a mustache to look cool and when his daughter said you look lame with it he was like oh my god i look lame i was like that's not vegeta he doesn't give a fuck what other people think this is such a pansy ass version of vegeta and then the fact that he was mad that they didn't notice uh you know that he shaved his mustache is like the fuck is this Vegeta? People say that this Vegeta is better written because, you know, 
he's he's completely family oriented, and that's fine. Dragon Ball Super did the same thing, and I was fine with it. But don't make him a bitch. Like he's turned into an emotional little bitch. He seems like a stepdad. He seems like one of those lame ass stepdads that makes like lame ass jokes to look cool with the kids. Like why does he care if he looks cool in front of his daughter or not? That seems just lame. The old Vegeta was, you know, he was. He had the coolness of, I don't give a fuck. And then this one is, oh, I care. Like a fucking weird ass loser dad. I did not like that when they went with his direction. Gohan's direction has always been lame. But it's like, you know, I think they did more in this show than in uh, Super. Uh, Goku, a lot of people said that he was more mature in this than Super. Which I do agree, he's more, more mature. But to say he is mature is not true. Dragon Ball Z Goku was far more mature than this Goku. This Goku's acting like... Dragon Ball Goku. He co he complained about eating all the time. Only thing about eating, uh, doesn't care what he does. He fights. He isn't as battle oriented as uh, Z Goku, uh, Super Goku, but he is more food oriented. I think that's where his problem is. Like I said, he is definitely more mature than uh, Super Goku, but Super Goku's bar isn't that high up. That guy has no maturity. This guy just has a little bit. And there's times where he shows intelligence. But still, he's not on the maturity level of Z Goku. I feel like he still digressed when it comes to his personality. Just not as much as Super. And I still don't like that. He digressed physically, but that doesn't mean he has to you know, digress mentally. I also don't like the clothes he wears this in this. I know it was the same one that he wore in the end of uh, Z. But I didn't like those clothes anyway. Uh, so I don't like his design either. Pan is an annoying character. She's just obnoxious as hell. Uh, Trunks, actually, I don't mind this one. He's a lot more better than the other one. He's more like the future Trunks, but his outfit's also pretty trash. Like, what the fuck is he wearing? So, yeah, I really don't like the designs already. Uh, I don't like the personality of Vegeta, definitely. Goku's personality in this one's better than in Super, but still not that great. He's still childish and acting kid-like. And I get it. He has a kid's body, but that doesn't mean he has to act like a kid. He still has the mind of an adult. Uh, also, uh, what's the thing called? Uh, I hate Pan. I think she's a, an annoying character. She's just very annoying and like they focus on her too much She's got more screen time than Vegeta and that's not a good thing uh, They can show her a little bit here and there, but I don't really like it Also, the whole idea of making the crew being Goku, Trunks, and Pan just seems really random It seems like a random one. Also, I don't like what they do with uh, Goten. They made Goten uh, you know, a guy who cares so much about dating and like, oh, he's a ladies man. And there's nothing wrong with that type of character. But if that's all he does, then it's kind of lame. I mean, this guy's in the middle of fighting baby and this asshole's on the phone talking to the girl. I'm like, dude, hang up the fucking phone call. First deal with the situation and then talk on it. But then he's like this. Also, he's not even caring about his training or fighting. He just wants to hang out with girls, which they completely butchered his character. It's weird because they made Trunks' character a lot better. But they ruined uh, Goten's character. So I do not like what they did with uh, him and that. Also, Goku's power decrease thing is a little weird. I get it since he has, you know, he has a little kid body. He can't maintain the energy and stuff and he, and stuff. But one thing that doesn't make sense is they keep him saying, well, you didn't have this ability when you were a kid. But that's not how it fucking works. They just reverted his body to the physical form of a kid, uh, of him as a kid. But not him completely as a kid, if you know what I mean. It's not like they're taking his body out of the timeline. It's just digressing his, you know, adult body into a kid form. So, him not being able to do the same moves because he couldn't do it as a kid does not fucking matter. Why are they mentioning him in Dragon Ball? There's a lot of things he couldn't do in Dragon Ball. He couldn't go fucking Super Saiyan either, but apparently he can go Super Saiyan fine in this. Which, right now, I've only seen most Super Saiyan 1. They haven't shown 2 or 3. I get 3. 2, I don't know why they're not showing that one. But Super Saiyan 1... They're apparently saying that he can go Super Saiyan 1 even though he didn't go as a kid. But then they're saying he can't use instant transmission. So that makes no sense to me. So you're telling me a technique where it doesn't matter how old you are, you can learn it and do it. He can't do it because he's, his body is digressed. But he can go Super Saiyan, which is also something he didn't obtain uh, when he was a kid. And on top of that, this requires a ton of energy and is more straining. He can go Super Saiyan, but he can't uh, use instant transmission. That makes no sense. Also, I mean... Goten, uh, Gohan and Goten and Trunks did it as a kid going Super Saiyan doing all this stuff. They didn't have a problem just because they were kids. And like I said, they digress his body, but they make it sound like they pulled his body out of the time stream from Dragon Ball and put it here and say, well, you couldn't do it in Dragon Ball. What the fuck does it matter if you couldn't do it in Dragon Ball? All it did is regress his adult body in GT to, you know, a, a, a kid form. He should still have, obviously his range, energy reserve should be lower, but he should still be able to do all the techniques he does. Using instant transmission doesn't require that much energy. 
I don't know what the fuck they, why that's a problem. Obviously, it's just to make it even more of a problem and challenge and stuff to have a reason for, like, you know, drama or whatever. But I felt like it was just dumb. I did not like that uh, whole aspect of that. But yeah, so this arc as a whole is pretty big, uh, it's pretty crappy. It's pretty big disappointment. I expected as much, but it's pretty lame. If I'm being honest, I would wish that they would have sped through the whole process of getting the Dragon Balls and just transition to the baby arc right away. Uh, a lot of the stuff I didn't like. I think as a whole right now, it's very it's very hard to watch. I'm literally forcing myself to watch this to make these videos and to, you know, to prove uh, Terrell Williams wrong. But it's a it's really a pain. I don't know why people are saying, oh, GT wasn't that bad. No, it was, right now at least, it's pretty bad. Hopefully it does, uh, my opinions do change on it later on because the baby arc is stated to be the best arc in the show and better than this one, so yeah. Uh, for right now, this is just how I feel about uh, GT. I'm not having a really good opinion on it. It's kind of a thumbs down for me. I'm kind of forcing myself to watch it, but hopefully it does get better and I can talk more positively about it. But yeah, that's it for this first arc. I will be dropping out the baby arc soon. I've, like I said, I just started in it. So within a couple of days, I think I should be able to finish it. Hopefully it's not too long because this one, I think it's the longest. But yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, stay tuned for my next reviews on GT and my power scaling video on GT. I will be going more in depth on it. And uh, I'll try to make more of a longer video talking about, uh, you know, the show as a whole and what I feel about it. But uh, yeah, that's it for this video and I hope you guys enjoyed.